Today we're going to be talking about some King Water Stones, great entry level stones and sharpening ZDP 189. Not probably the ideal stone for this, but just kind of a test to show you guys that what's important is skill, not the equipment. Now I do have higher end water stones. I've got my Naniwa Professionals 1K, 4K. I've got a Naniwa Snow White. I have an Atama 140. All kinds of good stuff. These stones, the reason why they're so highly recommended and so good is this is $14 and this is $20 on Amazon right now. Okay, And you get two great water stones. You do have to soak them before you use them. I use mine. I keep them perma-soaked in this setup that I have right here. Uh, you, this setup is nice. I do a ton of sharpening so it makes a lot of sense for me. But you don't need necessarily all this setup stuff either. What you do need probably is this stone, these two stones right here. And then one of these $20 flattening stones. The diamond plates work probably better. The problem with those being is that they cost a tremendous amount of money. I think uh, you can get some of the DMT ones for 30 bucks if you look around. This costs 20 bucks. Also, I don't have to worry about removing excess amounts of my stone. It kind of helps prolong my stone life. And I also like it for building up a slurry. You also keep this perma soaked. So, let's go ahead and get to it. I've got my 1K. Let me go ahead and prep my stone. You always want to make sure that you flatten your stones uh, before you use them. Sometimes people use a ruler or whatnot to check and make sure that they're nice and flat. Sharpen off the edges as well. Make sure that those aren't touching your edge. Uh, just, just part of the stone maintenance. If they hollow out too much, you just won't get the results that you're probably looking for when you're sharpening. So let's get to it. I've got this ZDP knife that could probably use a good sharpening. Got some paper right here. You can see, I mean, it's just not really cutting through that very nicely. So let's go ahead and start here. Let's get straight to it. There's a lot of good videos you guys could watch out there, like the Corin videos, John Broda, uh, Marie Carter. They've uh, already beat me to the punch when it comes to how to do these motions that I'm doing right now. I'm just going to show you guys what is possible when you actually go out there and you practice. The most important thing with sharpening is skill and practice and knowledge. The tools come in dead last. They definitely do enhance the experience and can speed things up. But it's not the most important thing. You can't just throw money at this issue. I mean, if I could throw money at being like a really good basketball player or something like that, I mean, I totally would do it. But it, it just doesn't work like that. You have to actually get out there and you have to practice. It's the same thing with sharpening. Feels like I got a burr right there. Let's go ahead and switch to this side now. Using some moderate pressure, you guys can see that black stuff right there. That's actually uh, swarf metal filings being removed. The reason why water stones work so fast is because they uh, remove that layer of grit and reveal fresh grit as you sharpen. So this is going to be ideal, probably one of the faster ways to sharpen. The problem being, though, is it's messy. It takes some time to learn, but once you do it, it's definitely probably the most liberating way to sharpen. You could sharpen anything. It's also just going to be faster than those uh, Norton crystalline stones and all those things. I mean, I, I just haven't had too much luck with those when it comes to sharpening stuff uh, quickly. They do work though. Feels like I got a burr there. This part's important. We use some edge trailing strokes. I don't count. I use moderate pressure to start, and then as I go, I finish with light pressure. I start from tip to heel, just so I don't gouge into the stone with the tip. That's all. You could definitely go like this. I've just learned to do it like this. Okay. So 
Some people also come up just like that. I just prefer doing the same motion on both sides. You could totally sharpen uh, on with your offhand as well. I, I just prefer not to do that just because I find it's faster to transition by using the same hand. Also, when I first started, I didn't have the best equipment. I didn't have these like awesome uh, lifts and stuff like that to give me enough wrist clearance so I had to be at the edge of the table. So it just made more sense to speed up the process by doing it with one hand. All right, let's go ahead and wipe that off. And let's see the quality of the edge here. It looks like I didn't really get the heel. I'm seeing some kind of light reflection right here. So I probably need some more work in that area. But definitely cutting much cleaner uh, in areas above that heel there. But totally looks like I need to come back to the heel. Yeah, up at the belly, I mean, we're cutting good. But definitely back here at the heel, not as good. And this is kind of a trickier area for me to sharpen. Getting the bellies and stuff and the tips are just fine. I just seem to have more trouble with the, uh, the heel sections on these blades. Platicos have these nice full flat grinds, so they're, they're really easy to sharpen when it comes to folders. Some uh, designers do some really just god-awful design choices when they, uh, they don't extend the plunge all the way down the edge. And things like that, like on the ZT405. It just makes it, uh, really pisses me off trying to try to sharpen it. Because it actually gets thicker here at the heel because they didn't extend the plunge all the way back. But if you sharpen your knife, I mean, you, you don't want that. All right, let's go ahead and even it out. Lighten the pressure up. This uh, choil or casa area definitely does make it tougher to get into the heel. Swipe off the blade. Nope, probably still needs more work. Yeah, we can see right there the heel definitely needs some more work. But the belly, the belly is definitely doing good. Increase the pressure. 
See if we can get that damage to straighten out. And then we'll go ahead and lighten the pressure. stragglers let's go ahead and move on to the 6k king and see if we can pick up some of those stragglers there oh gotta love it when those batteries die huh mm. ticks me off man all right make sure this is nice and flat build up a nice slurry there let's see dry the hand off we can see the bevel we have there. I'm gonna go ahead and do some strapping strokes on there. Murray Carter calls is scary sharp because he's not polishing off all the teeth. He's just refining them on the 6K stone. I mean, you could also polish the knife up to a nice mirror finish using the 6K stone. You just have to be careful that you don't crush your edge, round the uh, apex, over polish it. You'll lose that nice bite. It'll definitely give you a comfortable shave, but it's just not going to cut very well. You can just uh, go dull faster. If you have uh, excellent consistency with your sharpening though, then you don't have to worry as much about rounding over the apex. But the more stones you work the edge up on, it's almost inevitable that you're going to have some rounding. Of course, uh, people with great talent are able to work up, I mean, an incredible amount of different stones freehand without ever having to worry about that. I've done so in the past, but you know, it just seems to take a lot of effort to make sure that each pass is super consistent. Excellent. Feels like we're pretty sharp here. Let's go ahead and grab another piece of paper. Right on. Still a little bit of toothies in there. but definitely cutting much better. All right, you guys could see the edge that we have right there. And it's been a while since I filmed the video. It looks like I'm finally starting to grow back some arm hair. So let's go ahead and see how well it shaves. You know, it'll shave the hair. Not blown away or anything by the performance cell here. Let's see on this side here. See, I really have to bring it down to the arm skin. It's not catching them as I run it above them. So it could, it could definitely be sharper. We could try and see if this uh, strop right here will do something. This is CBN, looks like uh, one micron. I probably need to clean this strop off to get the best results. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. You have to make sure your strops are nice and clean to get the best results out of them. Also, the strapping only enhances what you have. It, it can't 
repaired damaged apexes. It, if you do uh, sharpening on a really, really coarse grit and then try to jump up to the strop, it's just not necessarily going to do much for you. All right, we'll see what that did, dudes. That's better. You can see it, it's definitely not having to uh, rub on the skin as much before it catches and cuts the hair. It even sounds quieter when we cut it. Excellent. If you make an S cut, that's definitely a sign of a uh, great edge because it takes some push cutting ability. So there you have it. Cool. Sharpening ZDP 189. Uh, you don't need the straps. The straps can enhance what you have. Uh, we probably could have done some more work on the 6K to see if we got the same results. We also probably could have done some more work on the 1K before we moved up to the 6K, but I, I got bored. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching. Take care.